So not too long ago, I asked you guys to send over your home lab setups, pictures, short description, your name, that's about it. We are going to review those. And if you do like this video and you want yours featured in the next one, check out this email, send it over and I'll try to throw it in next time. Before I cover your guys's, which we have a good amount of submissions here, I am going to talk about mine in order of fairness because mine is not in its like complete form, but it's working and it is right over there. I have all my networking stuff in a pretty nice little 3D printed 10 inch rack. It's modular, super cool. I'll link to it down below, but I'm having to kind of custom print for some of these Omada devices that I have, particularly the router doesn't quite fit in there, right? So I'm kind of coming up with a solution to fix that. But we got the Omada router. We have a Omada eight port switch with four of the ports being POE. Those ports powering a Raspberry Pi, which has the Omada software in it, my Netbird agent, and a DNS tool for Cloudflare. Also up there on top of the rack, we have a Omada AP. We have a little box to manage a kind of, I think it's Casita uh, smart switches. And we have a Synology NAS sitting there. That NAS is not gonna be part of this setup. It's gonna be an offsite backup solution with a Proxmox backup server on it. And then actually in the rack on top, we have a uh, real link and VR. I generally wouldn't want to use that, but I got a good deal on that and like eight cameras that have to use the, the um, MVR to work. Someday I'll go ahead and switch all those out. And then right under the MVR is my current pride and joy. It is a open NAS big server unit. It has rather impressive hardware. A big old motherboard for room for a bunch of different expansion slots has a really nice Intel CPU in it. I do owe them a review on it and do expect that coming soon on the channel, but I've been so busy trying to get through any dedicated sponsor videos because after like two more, I'm done doing those. So yay. Started a job at Netbird, which is really cool. But I mean, the open ads, they're, they're going to start selling the case soon, which even that alone is awesome. This one here has 12 hard drive bays and basically like a mid tower size computer sitting on top of it on its side with a full motherboard. I have, it's, it's not the best GPU, but I have a, a 580 um, AMD GPU in it just to give my uh, Windows virtual machine a little bit more power. I definitely need more RAM for it. I got Proxmox on it just running bare. It is awesome. Under that, I have a Triplight UPS that has definitely saved me a few times. The one I have is a bit more than I actually need, but it goes like 40 minutes if the power goes out. So that's nice. And then I have a uh, a system set up where machines start shutting down slowly as the battery drains, it's a good deal. And then that, that's about it. You can tell it's still a mess. The whole point of this home labbing stuff is learning, trial, error, playing around. And if you are interested in learning, you should probably check out our sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an app right here that I actually fire up quite a bit. I try to launch and use this instead of like doom scrolling Instagram or something like that. There's a bunch of different courses for math, computer science, data science, logic, technology, and so forth. It's kind of like gamified learning. You can see all of the various courses or little lessons that I've gotten through, and it's really cool. It has a lot of practice, so I'm able to refine my knowledge as I progress, and it will get into things like if else statements, learning Python, bunch of stuff. It has been helping me get just a little bit smarter every single day. Like I said, each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that let you play with various concepts, a method that has proven to be six times more effective than watching a YouTube video, general lecture videos, things like that. Helping you to build your understanding from the ground up with engaging problems, competitive features, and daily encouragement to keep you going again. Like I said, it's kind of gamified. There's points, leaderboards, and things like that, and I'm just getting better and better at it, but as I go on, it gets harder and harder, so it works out. So if you want to try everything Brilliant has to offer, you can do it for free for 30 days using my link down below or the link on screen now. Just give that little QR code a scan and you could get 20% off an annual plan if you decide to move forward. So with all that, we are going to get into your guys' home labs. Uh, in the initial post, I did say that I need an actual physical picture of the hardware. So if you didn't send that, I'm gonna have to skip it for now, but resubmit it with some pictures and then we will get to it next time. Starting off with Levi here, going at most recent to first submissions. Got into the hobby about a year ago using old laptops as home servers. That's definitely a great way to go about getting started. Recently got an Elite Desk 800 small form factor, 
two eight terabyte hard drives and a 10 terabyte hard drive in addition, custom printed uh, drive holders, threw it in a cabinet, not enough airflow, running true NAS scale. Let's take a look here. Ooh, that's the little 3D printed bracket for that uh, hard drive there. I've been really diving into 3D printed stuff, so I definitely, definitely appreciate that. Ooh, here's the inside of the little Elite Desk. Getting little small PCs like this is definitely a great way to go about getting started. I mean, you could probably pick up one of these off of like Facebook market for a hundred bucks, if not less. And a lot of the services that we run are pretty low resource intensive. So you can run a lot of stuff off of a little tiny mini PC, just like this. And there it is in all of its pride and glory. Got a lot of USBs there on the front. Great little mini PC, definitely a great server as well. They're still running Casa OS on the laptop. Got a few different services here. looks like it's their media server primarily because we've got Jellyfin here couple of the R applications. And this is the dashboard for the Elite Desk. Got a lot of stuff blurred out. Got the R suite going right here. Got some uh, resources. I don't know about that. Uh, uh, <laughs> might need to rework that a little bit. Got a link to TrueNAS Scale, Portainer. So this is running all the other services and TrueNAS. And then that takes us to Lucas. Lucas has a lot going on here. We got another HP Elite Desk 800. Pretty decent specs here. And there are three. Dell 330s in it, all with the same config. A whole bunch of memory, holy. It just seems to be running Proxmox. Got a patch panel, got some storage with a Synology, a bunch of Seagate hard drives in it, two different UPSs, some equipment outside of the rack, and then all the containers. Looks like running Proxmox, and based on the virtual machines, they're doing it in the uh, recommended methodology, which I'm still working on trying to get all my stuff like that. In which if you're running Docker or things like that, you run them in virtual machines. But let's take a look. Let's hit view here. Oh, that's a cluster. I do love these little cable management things right here though. That looks really good. I'm assuming that this is the back. What it is, this is the front. We got, oh, that is a, a beefy rack here. We got a bunch of Unify stuff, some networking stuff up here. We have those three uh, single unit servers. This right here is the Synology with the UPS and some UPS towers. So power goes out, shit's not going out anytime soon. You definitely got some time before you need to worry about that shutting down too hard. All right, this one's a Romeo. We have a nice organized list of everything going on here. We got our rack, we got a bunch of U uh, Ubiquiti equipment, four Dell 760s hidden behind a OCD panel, six bay custom built NAS with an Intel Xeon processor in it, NVIDIA RTX 2000, which is an awesome GPU that I do want to get someday, and then a bunch of software here, a uh, load of virtual machines, Portainer, Pi-hole, Nextcloud, NetBird, shout out to NetBird, and then a bunch of LXC containers, and ooh, that's pretty. Look at that. We got the patch panels here. The, the, the lighting is immaculate. Of course, we have a lamp. And I just really have to give a shout out to the fact that you're able to make front power um, outlets here actually look good is a feat in its own. Getting the right cables and matching that had to have not been the easiest task in the world. So shout out. That looks like Xfinity. I'm sorry that you have to have Xfinity. So do I. Overall, incredibly impressive. The back looks pretty good. You got all the cables tied up. Definitely the effort was spent into making the front look pretty and I do respect it. Next up, Spencer in New York. What do you got going on here? You have a Rackmate from the bottom being a LinkStation N1 with TrueNAS. We have some Minisform stuff, a Minisform S100 stick. And it looks like we have a little travel router here. I got that same router. It is definitely goaded. Let's take a look here. Oh, <laughs> look how cute. I can see why you have that little travel router now. Got a nice little switch here. We have our patch panel looking real good. We have our Minus Form. That looks like that Minus Form stick right there. Very, very cute. This is all anybody really needs. Looks beautiful just sitting on a desk for sure. My golly. And for how small it is and how much crap you shoved in there, I am impressed that you actually made the back look moderately decent. That looks like some kind of mounted outlet thing pointing up, which is genius. I want that. I want a link to it. Please send it. <laughs> this guy here didn't send their name, but they sent everything in a Word document, which is pretty cool. Very impressive desktop setup. Love the monitors. I can see uh, some nice Ikea little stuff going on there. We got a Synology NAS next to the gaming PC. Granted, gaming PC isn't really used for gaming anymore, I understand. But we have the Synology 4-bay NAS. Synology has been having some uh, 
issues, in my opinion, lately, but it's definitely a good NAS, nonetheless. Oh, and we got some little cute stuff here. Multiple Raspberry Pis for small projects. This little thing for retro game emulation. AI hat, AI camera. We have a Pre Preo Man 5, just for looks, which I've never heard of that personally, but looks cute. Under the desk, we have a UPS uh, absolute necessity, as I said earlier. Oh, there it is. There's the rack. We got our patch panel. We got a little TP-Link switch. Not sure if it's Omada. We got the uh, number one Dell and number two Mac Mini. So we have a Dell Mini PC, Mac Mini, or Dell PC right here, Mac Mini. And that looks like might be an Intel Nook right there. Not quite sure. KVM switch. We have a, the Minisform NAB6 Lite running Debian. M2 Mac Mini for the Mac environment. Practice coding in it. Awesome. A Dell 3080 Micro, and a lot of this stuff is 3D printed. Overkill in some ways, I don't think it's overkill. That That's not overkill. Even if you have computers being underutilized, I mean, you got room to grow. That's what's important. This one is from Michael, 100% 3D printed 12 bay NAS, 32 gigs DDR4, five eight terabyte hard drives, the one terabyte NVMe for cache, GeForce 1660 Ti. Let's take a look here. Oh yeah, that looks good. That just looks like a normal kind of desktop computer almost. Yeah, that's nice. I love 3D printed projects like this. I mean, if you bought that case, it'd probably be like, what, 150 bucks for kind of a lower end model. And that's probably like maybe $30, $30 a filament in time. And it probably is, absolutely perfect look at that very nice very nice michael love it this one we got one picture here let's view the rack before we view Ooh, server manager dashboard there looks like running windows uh, with a bunch of unify equipment we got the server down there we got the unify nvr looks like a dream machine right there i'm definitely jealous of your networking rack setup running nut on a raspberry pi didn't see that in there but i believe it's hiding in there somewhere and that server that we saw is a dell power edge r230 came loaded with windows server 2016 little outdated planned upgrade to Linux, but I haven't settled on which one yet. That is fair. Probably one of the hardest decisions in the world. All of them are probably better than Windows though. So no matter what your choice is, it's going to be a good one. Neil here made a PowerPoint for us. I'm always a fan of a good PowerPoint. Looks like you are definitely, <laughs> you're definitely not a fan of LXCs. You got virtual machines galore. My goodness. I don't even need to look over here. Just looking at the RAM usage, I could tell you you're using some VMs. You got to respect it though. 125 gigs. All this running with a, a single 100 gig hard drive. I don't know what CPU is, but it has 32 cores. So you're definitely not going to run into problems. Ah, it's a Dell PowerEdge R620 with two Count that two E5 2650s, 120 gigs of RAM. Oh, there's no pictures of the actual hardware. Ooh, this one has a lot going on here. Oh my, oh my. Let's jump right into the pictures. Ah, that's nice. We got a beefy boy Dell desktop right there. Fantastic cable management. I can't even believe the amount of hard drives that this thing can hold. Holy, what the hell are you storing? If I tried to fill those things with even four terabyte drives, I'd probably go bankrupt. Micro TI Cloud Smart Switch up on the top here with the patch panel. We got some other hardware that I'm not familiar with. There's just too much here. I'm not gonna be able to go through everything, but we do got some Dell Precision Racks uh 7010 desktop pc for game servers with a microsoft server running ubuntu 24.4 pretty decent cpu we got a ups of course main nas nine four terabyte drives running at raid six for 25 terabytes we have a dell power edge r620 as your proxmox host another dell, dell power edge for experimenting you're definitely a fan of dell oh we got an hp sneaking in there Currently unused, but there we go. <laughs> Why use HP when you have all these Dells? Got a Synology rack station for backup. And of course, another Dell Power Edge for your AI server. Fantastic stuff. Looks like you're running Umbrella OS, which is a great little operating system or tool on top of an operating system. Plex, Pi-hole, Docker, Grafana, all the essentials, all the essential toolkit for having a self-hosted stuff there. And we got some Bitcoin stuff, Bitfeeder, nodes so you're definitely a little into cryptocurrency which is cool definitely definitely an impressive setup you got there next up from chris we have a link an imager link 
Ooh, got an eighth gen Intel Nook here. Looks like it was stripped down a little bit. So is that a hard drive bay? It looks like you're sliding a Nook into a hard drive bay. That'd be kind of cool. Here we got a V5 relay for the external PCU. And we got a beefy, beefy desktop form factor NAS here. Fractal Define R5 case with an Intel GPU. Nice. Yeah, this is really cool. Got a lot of custom stuff going on. That's crazy. You put a Intel Nook in your hard drive bay. That's that's impressive. And the Nook is connected to the LED reset switch. So you can operate each system independently. I'm through about half of this mission, so I'm probably going to break this into a, a part two video. So with that, I do hope you enjoyed. If you have a older submission, I'll get to it as long as it has kind of some pictures with it. I absolutely love looking at your guys' setups. It's super fun, especially comparing it to my own here. And then it allows you guys watching to kind of compare and maybe submit yours to be included in the future video. So with all that, I'm going to stop for now. I'm going to record part two. That will be coming out probably a week later or so maybe less. But with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.